All right, guys. Over the past, uh, golly, 17 years, you've heard me touch on and run away from clubs in the club life. And I'm speaking specifically and riffing today on fly fishing clubs in Texas specifically. Not talking about anywhere else but Texas. Um, you know, if you had a life that was built around being in the key club in high school or being in a fraternity or whatever, you've got an advantage over me. I was always flying solo, kind of a lone wolf kind of guy, not one, to, not crazy or anything. It's just that I didn't feel like I fit in with any of the clubs and what they were doing uh, for various reasons. So fast forward to uh, fly fishing in the clubs that, that are around here in north central Texas, which I'm most familiar with, although I vis visited a number of them over the years. Um, and four years, I've questioned their existence because, uh, you know, even though they still exist, it's a, it's an interesting thing. Um, you know, changes have gone on all around the club life and especially fly fishing club life. Um, you know, the, there was problems that I saw early on with technology and the fact that, um, uh, the technology that they were using was 0, 0.00 and it did not that translated into not being an outreach to youth okay um but still there the clubs are still there um they didn't do anything uh, very highly aware about environmental issues on a local basis um they seem to be organized around um their own world of traveling to Colorado, oh boy, and uh, ignoring great places to go for the most part here in the great state, in the great big state of Texas, but still they exist. Um, you know, they're pretty homogenous too, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you straight up. They're, they're very, very uh, Caucasianly. <laughs> For lack of a better word, there was, was one, but, you know, backing up to technology, about 10 years ago, 10 years, maybe a little bit more, I had an occasion to have a conversation with a big cheese of the uh, fly fishing, I'm not going to pull any punches, fly fishing, fishing federation, I'll, I'll save his name, you'll, you'll probably figure out who he, who he is. But I told him that, uh, you know, they needed to get with the program and bring youth in there. They're going to hit the wall. Uh, and the wall I'm talking about is a demographic uh, wall. And they were on a, on a crazy train going straight towards it. And one of the ways that I did, I was able to build them a website for free uh, that brought some more uh, life to that organization. And uh, the thing is, is I wanted them or encouraged them to pod, not podcast, I wouldn't podcast back then, but um, to broadcast, to record, or some way live stream, whatever the tech, that's a long time ago, when technology wasn't nearly as easy then as it is now, but it could have been done. Their meetings, so the people can't that can attend meetings or want to get a taste of what a fly fishing club is like, they can do it from just like you're doing it from the comfort of your own chair. Now, is that crazy? I don't think so. It's not crazy now, and they're still not doing it, but still, they exist. So anyway, I knew that club life wasn't for me if they were not going to kind of improvise, adapt, and overcome, as that wonderful saying goes. Um, I'm painting with a broad brush here in general. You know, I've been, I get questions this time of year about clubs because fly fishing slows down in Texas and uh, people and weather people necessarily turn inward and go inward and they are missing interactions and i get questions about should i join a club i'm new to fly fishing what good is a club and all these kind of questions um that i have a perspective on but let me just tell you there are pros and cons to joining a club if you're not a club person these are clubs okay and the 
strictest old school, old white school sense of the word. They're clubs. Um, that doesn't mean you can't get in if you're not white. That just means that you're not. <laughs> it is not going to be a, uh, the sampling of the American people percentage wise that you see in public generally in the state of Texas. But um, strides are being made. It, the time goes by. But um, the other thing is that you will actually get some good information from a few of these people. There will be a few that are as passionate as you. Because you're watching this, you've got to be passionate like me, right? Well... There are a few of those in there, and, and they exist, and they're there to share information. It's surprising that even in clubs, people that are members won't even tell their secrets to other members. Um, it's like the secret handshake kind of thing, and that is another thing that drove me away from club life. Make no mistake, I'm a member of a club right now, the Lower Laguna Madre, Fly Fishing Association. I guess it's an association. Is that a club? I, I don't care. The reason I'm a member there is because they have a contest every year that's pretty cool. And it's about who catches the biggest fish that's a member of the club, you know. But even at the top of that club, there is some, some uh, friction, so to speak, because some people lose perspective on who the club is for and who, like, who... Nobody has possession of a club, but some people think they do. That's just the way it goes. I mean, hey, he's probably not watching. Um, anyway, if you... The thing about clubs in Texas is... <clears throat> the thing about clubs in Texas is that they're concentrated where population is concentrated. So Texas is a great, huge state with a lot of rural areas. Um, with people spread out all over. So the odds are very good that you're not going to find a mule shoe fly club. Uh, you're not going to find a turkey Texas fly club, okay? You're going to have to kind of migrate your hiney to um, a place where the clubs meet. That necessarily means that uh, you might not be willing to go even further to try a different club out. It's understandable. Texas is just a pain state for the size of it. it. You know, it's just, it's hard. So you got to live and let live. And if you don't like it, hit the road. Burn some, burn some rubber off the sole of your shoes and get out of there. Um, you know, the true fact of the matter for me as I've, as I've gone through life and this 17, 18 years of fly fishing is I'm, I'm really not a club person. The club I'm a member of they meet almost 600 miles from here. So that gives you an idea of the state of Texas and the size, and it gives you an idea of how much I want to attend those regular meetings. You know, it's just not something that, if I can fly fish in the lower Laguna Madre or go to a meeting, what do you think, huh? What do you do? What would you do? So the club thing and attending, it's kind of hard for me, but... You guys who want some information, some knowledge, you young guys especially, I want to encourage you. There are possibilities of going to a club. Like I think Fort Worth Fly Fishers has had a, a renaissance, so to speak, with young people um, really moving into that club and, and kind of asserting themselves. And that's what you have to do. You can't go as one person and change the world. I promise you, been there, done that, tried that, ain't going to work, no way, no how, no time. But uh, if you can get a group of guys, just two or three, just more than one, there's power in numbers. Now, if you get three, awesome. If you get five, you're going to take the place over probably. These clubs are not huge. And the attendance, although membership is fairly large in some, the attendance is always fairly low. You know, back to the demographic train wreck that became of, of the fly fishing clubs in Texas, you know, it was the train hit full throttle during the pandemic. And that is when, you know, it just hit the wall. This guy that I was talking about earlier who who was, uh, you know, I was talking to him about upgrading everything and going with live video and, and recording these things so people could see them. 
he told me, and I quote, people want to get together and, and show off their fish and their phone. They want to they want to shake hands. They want to do this, that, and the other in person. And I was like, I give up. Okay, this is not something I'm going to get anywhere with. So I'm, if I can't get anywhere, I'm going somewhere, and it isn't there. So I wrote that off, and I have not been into club life, but I have promised you guys I would talk about club life here in Texas. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you um, – a list of the clubs and when they meet. We're just going to scroll that out. I hope you uh, stay in for this long treatise on fly fishing clubs in Texas. And this is going to go over in podcasts. I don't know that anybody knows anything about those yet in the YouTube world of fly fishing podcasting. I always thought a podcast is just audio, but if you just listen to the audio on this, you'll probably get a pretty good picture of the entire state of Texas situation with fly fishing clubs. If you have a specific question about a specific club, get to me, text me, go to my website, texasflycaster.com. I've got a lot more stories on clubs. I call it the club life. And uh, go ahead and, you know, text me, 940-380-0408. Send me an email, texasflycaster at gmail.com. Or if you're really, really, really brave, just write something down in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Get ready for more of these coming at you, these little podcasty things. Gosh, that was what a heck of a riff, 12 minutes or so. Wow. Sorry, might be a little bit long for a podcast, but it is what it is. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again this week, somehow, some way, somewhere on the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel. So guys, as we run through these websites, you'll realize um, something that the people who run these websites don't realize, and that is you never get a second chance to make a first impression. A lot of these websites are pretty bad, and they're enough to turn a young fly fisher that wants to learn off. A few of them are pretty good. Um, Austin looks good. Houston looks good. GRTU, Guadalupe River Trout Unlimited looks good. Um, and there's a couple others in there. But really, realistically, um, a lot of these websites are pretty lame. And a lot of these guys are so um, lacking in energy that they just put stuff on Facebook. Really, really a bad way to go is to invest any content on Facebook. So that's a quick look. I kind of like the uh, these websites uh, compared to a few years ago. Definitely they've all improved somewhat. At least uh, there's not dead guys on the first page. <laughs> so anyway, look down in the information uh, in the description for linkage to these clubs. Thanks for watching, guys.